family. Welcome to interview 178. We have our guest for today is March and her Instagram name is M-A-R-J dot W-O-N-G and she will be connecting with us in just one second. Um, of course, we have some questions planned for her but we do want to take questions from the chat as well. Um, so type them in at any time. We'll make sure to scroll through and get all of them. And happy holidays, Tamily. You can see my tree in the background since we're in my work from home office. Um, we'll be connected in one minute. Instagram always moves everything around of how to connect and I can't get this keyboard to go away. <laughs> well, hello everyone. Thank you for starting to watch so quickly. We'll be connected in one second. I'm sending you an invite as long as this keyboard will get out of the way. There we go. Hi. Hi. Thank you so much for being interview 178. We're very excited to talk to you. Awesome. Thanks for having me. So much fun. Absolutely. So we're going to jump right in and ask our favorite question, but of course we'll take questions from the chat as well. Okay. Um, but Marge, if you can tell us how did you start the method and when? Um, started in August 2018, um, but I was in a little blip of a moment of time coming from hot yoga world, finding, you know, some other kind of movement practice, um, practiced Ashtanga yoga for a year, and like a mom friend introduced me mm. and mentioned she had been doing TAM for like a year and a half or something and she was all over and she was kind of just an acquaintance I didn't really know and I was like who am I to listen to you but you're cool like all right and she showed me she opened up her account she showed me the online studio and um I kind of got a sense I was like okay like whatever and I think I did some YouTubes she gave me her account login she was so kind enough to give me a account login and she's like but don't because I don't want to screw up my account this means a lot like I don't know if they're checking or if they're pinging and whatever and so I like logged in when she wasn't you know d doing her practice or whatever and I kind of got a feel of it but not really between that and the YouTubes and then I think I even did the two week trial and that wasn't enough like I did probably did like three or four classes uh -huh. um but didn't really get into it and then the stars aligned and I went to a convention and when I came back I don't know I was in some other alternate amazing space <laughs> and then the friend thing and the one month share friend thing was oh, I get yeah. and I guess I had already been following Tam the Tamily on Instagram or something like poking around there so I quickly messaged like three people and was like can I get a friend thing can you get me the friend thing I want to do it for one month I will do it and then it worked out I worked out and then I committed I think I got it on like the third of August and I was like nothing to lose it's free like let's do this and then after after the first or second class I was like okay this something is here and then after a week I was like okay my arms look, my ar something is happening. My arms look different or something uh -huh. I could tell was happening. My body seems to like respond very quickly to things. So I very, I very quickly knew. And then I just did it. I was just like, sign me up one month or whatever it is, the year, do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. I'm in. So. <laughs> Excellent. So That's fun. Awesome start. Um, so especially since you had been practicing yoga immediately before, like, what kind of differences did you see and why did you decide to stick with the method? 
Uh, differences? Well, when I was looking, I feel like I did look on Instagram and the dynamic movements, like I definitely knew that was something. I was like, oh, 40 reps of those, that'll get you. <laughs> that'll do something to you, for sure. And I could just tell. And then what I think I dug deeper and like, I remember her, there was a lot of information on like the cross vectors. And I was like, ooh, interesting. And accessory muscles. And I was like, oh, okay, yes. This, this is coming to make, you know, a lot of sense. Um, so, yeah. But it, it, I didn't know that, I didn't really, I thought the body that I had was the body that I always had. And, like, people just had bodies. I didn't know, I didn't really, I don't know, it's hard to explain, but I didn't really pay attention to, like, so much to the imbalances or it was an imbalance. yeah. And I thought my yoga body was just my yoga body, but literally that's a yoga body. And this is a little bit more finessed, shall we say. That's a great way to put it. Definitely. Definitely. So Especially, you know, I think people don't expect that if they're active with some other kind of fitness, that no. they will see those kind of changes. Yeah. And they're not really paying attention or caring. I don't think so much to... Just the little tweaks and the definition and the f finesses you can do to your physique that really change the look. Yeah. And it is a physique thing. It's not like a, you know, it's not yeah. like a booty thing or like right. a, it's just an, like an overall physique thing. Absolutely. Yes. It's kind know. of hard to explain what that's like. Yeah. That's exactly right. Yeah. Um. So being that you've now been, you know, dedicated to the method for a couple of years or going on three, I guess, more than three. Yeah. Um, I think three and a half. What would be your advice to someone who's not new to the method, but maybe they're not feeling motivated at this point? Um, I would say get some friends. <laughs> like as harsh as that sounds, like, Maybe get some friends or just reach out to the family and like message someone and like ask a question on their um, feed or whatever. Like that's a good way to just connect and have somebody that you can ask a, like a curious question, totally normal, but also being easy on yourself and just knowing that it takes time to get to where you want to be perhaps. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Like this year I started, t I did that Tam, Tamalaysia? I don't know who she is. I only know people by their Instagram handles. That's Tam totally fine. <laughs> Tamalaysia. She did that, um, she put out that Tam chart at the beginning of the year to track your progress to see which things you were, which lane you were in. I was like, cool, I want to see what lane I'm in. I want to try to get to like attain and sustain that for however long I can. And then that quickly became like, well, I'm Tamming every day. And then I was marking off every day. And then I talked to like Sass Tam, Cassandra, uh -huh. is that her name? I don't know. Yeah. And she was like, you Tam every day, Marge. Like, there's no point in tracking. Like, w ditch that thing. You do, you Tam. I was like, oh my gosh, I do Tam every day. It's, it's kind of easier now. I just go to the mat and that's what I do. And then now it's been like, oh, let's see how far I can get when I Tam every day. And then I got to like the spring and then I got to like summer. And then now I'm like, I can do the year. I am finishing the year, no rest. Like, <laughs> But I mean, that is, t I mean, and it was just a curious experiment to see uh -huh. like what would happen mentally, physically, am I going to wreck my body? Do I have more injuries? Am I tighter, leaner, whatever? Um, so that was an interesting thing. But I mean, it took me three and a half years to get here. So in the beginning, I was tamming, I think three days a week, third, doing the 30 minutes. Like I did that for a couple of weeks because I wasn't pra when I practiced yoga I wasn't practicing at home and that's the thing that really got me too I was used to going to the studio like it was a right. thing so I think switching up your practice practicing at home as a new person is also a bit of a thing and I've looked at footage from my from my early days of practicing tam and it's like I was I was tamming in a junk pile like a junkyard like <laughs> There were so many things behind me and then like the evolution of the Tam came and like now it's Tam cave. Now it's like a clear space. People don't right. bug me. Like, yeah, but it's, it's funny to see the evolution. Right. That is definitely an evolution and yeah. like what you need at different phases, you know? Yeah. It's so yeah, I would say go easy on yourself and like commit to like two or three Tams a week, like do 30 minutes. And if you can do an add on, do it 15 minutes. 
work your way up, hold that for like three weeks and then do another three weeks doing three to four times a week. See if you can throw in an intermediate, like a good mix of beginner and intermediate and then see where you are. And then literally within a few months, you will be five days a week. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. That's totally yeah. true. Especially and the momentum of the tamale is like pretty infectious. So I don't know. But that's just me. I'm a, I'm pretty, I'm an extremist. Like once I'm in it, I'm, I'm in it. Like, oh my gosh, this is so fun. <laughs> that's such a good can't, explanation. Can't stop Tammy. Right. That's yeah. like the one uniting factor is being a type A overachiever that's what this method attracts but I really don't class I really don't think that I am but my husband has told me he's like I think you might be <laughs> and then I'm like really but I but I thought all type A's were like you know lawyers and doctors and he's like no I think they come in all shapes and form just like right. people yes. you just have aspects and this is where it strikes you so I'm like oh that's interesting <laughs> but yeah it does seem to be a uniting factor especially as we talk to so many you know different tamers from completely different places and completely different careers or families and yeah. it, it does seem to be that one thing <laughs> so funny and all my like other yoga friends as well it's that that's kind of they have they have the same aspects there's an right. undercurrent of the type a <laughs> Um, what is something that you have learned from Tracy in doing the method? Oh, so much. <laughs> mm. I'm always learning for, I feel like she's like a g really great leader. I've learned a lot. She's very well rounded and like grounded and very, yeah, I would say, um, like little things about learning, learning about my body, learning about sequencing, learning about four beats to a count in music. Do you know what I mean? Like, oh yeah, I remember this from piano. Like it's, it is. Okay. We're doing four beats. Got it. Like, <laughs> like little things like that. But I, overall, overall, I don't know. Like the journey has been so, so many things, but I think also, She's really good at reiterating, like, if you need the break, you need the break, and being okay with the f extra five to ten, like, you know what I mean? You are what you are. You're in a female body. Things fluctuate. It's not hard and fast. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's an important lesson. Like, I think we have to learn and relearn over and over. Yeah. Like, it's okay. <laughs> Um, so we have a question in the chat from Loretta. She wants to know if you incorporate the dance cardio or other types of cardio. I go through phases with the dance cardio. I get super into it. And then I'm like, I can't, I can't sustain it. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Um, and I want to be, I want to be that dance cardio girl so bad. They look so cool. Like sass time. She's always like doing it. Loretta, like she's, doing all the things, but I, I don't, I just don't, I'm not fully there. I do have Asian blood. I'm not totally coordinated. I don't know, but I, I mean, my brain has connected a lot over the years, but I will stare at the advanced dance cardio <laughs> on the lives and be like, great work guys, yeah. you look amazing, you're doing great. But, and I'll like bop around but I know it's not like I do not look like them or it's not fluid but I try so I think last at the beginning of the year maybe I did that 10 minute dance cardio and that was with uh, Tracy Anderson that was all I could manage and I was like I got that down nailed that and I thought I would progress but then it's like I just can't keep it consistent so I'm in and out of it but yeah. I do enjoy it and it is super fun and I have come a long way when I do think of it. So I got I to gotta keep that in my mind. <laughs> yeah, I think that's important too, because people think like, oh, well, I'm not a dancer. Well, you yeah. don't have to be. You can learn it. And even if you're never good at it, it's still going to give you benefits from doing it. Yes. Yes, totally. Like I can't, I, like just coordinating things and matching your legs to your arms is, is, a is still a thing for me. And I'm like, wow. I'm getting it a lot quicker, but before I was, that was not firing. I was like, what? I just got to stick to what? I can't even do the legs. Like, how about we just stick right. to arm? <laughs> right. Yes. A lot. 
it's funny that that could be, and I mean, I guess that happens to anyone that's not, you know, a dancer, but to do something different with both of my arms and both of my legs. <laughs> yeah, on a different time. Yeah, you're like just going on a two beat and then your legs are going on like a single beat. Like, I don't know, that's har hard to match up and coordinate and make it look fluid and cool. Like, no. <laughs> yeah. But it does good things for your body and certainly for your brain too. For your brain, 100%. Yeah. Um, would you have any tips for people doing TAM while traveling, especially since some of us are maybe getting back to that now? Yeah, I've traveled. I've traveled quite a bit, a handful of times, which I am like very surprised with because when I would go back when I was doing more yoga, I would I would just wouldn't travel and do yoga like that was I would go to a studio to seek out yoga, but I wouldn't like practice at home. But the past handful of times I've gone, I've packed my weights. Like we went to Thailand before the COVIDs mm -hmm. and I packed my ankle weights, I think. No hand weights. I would use like water bottles or the hand weights. What else? Um, I've done, I've been to Utah. I've been to a few, uh, Costa Rica was another one that was two weeks. So yeah, I just pack my hand weights. I went camping over the summer overnight, pack the, pack the ankle weights, bring a travel mat, mm -hmm. um, and then set out your space <laughs> before you get to wherever you're going. Like yeah. camping was easy. Just lay it down under, you know, on your campsite or whatever. Um, hotel space is a little bit tricky, but I've tammed like half in a bathroom and half in the hallway on a dingy carpet and just like putting, I'm using all the towels to like... <laughs> sanitize the space so just you yeah, do that but if you my rule is if you bring the ankle weights if you are trekking those ankle weights across the world to thailand indonesia wherever i'm going like you got to use them so i'm not bringing these for nothing so and i think no i think it was when i didn't have my super duper iron whatever they are i, had, I just had my other ones and i think if i was traveling maybe i wouldn't bring them maybe i would no, I would. <laughs> um, but I think I must have brought just one set, so two and a half pounds, but now I would bring one and a half pounds and then just double them up. I wouldn't bring the three pounds. I would just bring one and double them up. Okay. And maybe class would be a lot longer. And then if you need to do the 30 minutes or do multitask, that's what I did when we went, I went to Nova Scotia as well, like with kids and minding kids and stuff. I would just wake up before them, make sure you're waking up before people and then 30 minutes at least you're getting in that routine and keeping that practice in you. Right. It doesn't have to be a hundred percent. It doesn't have to be full throttle, but like as long as you're just keeping the flow of moving, practicing, doing the things, it's kind of like what Tracy said in her Tam chat this, this week, like holiday season is upon us. Just, just don't, just don't, don't fall into the cookie crumbles. Right. <laughs> just, just continue doing your practice. Yeah. And if you can't do it, you know, a whole hour or also add dance cardio on, do what you can do and what yeah. your schedule. Yeah, but keep the routine going. Yeah, for yeah. sure. It can be so easy to just let it go. And then all of a sudden, you yeah. know, totally out of practice. But that's an excellent point. Yeah. Um, what would you say is your favorite thing about the method? Um... Well, I love the the mind body connection. Like the brain work is fun, um, but I do love the arms series just because it's arms and it's music, it's coordination, and I feel dancey, but not dance cardio, full on yeah. dance cardio. <laughs> um, but sometimes when she starts jumping and, and it's like at six o'clock in the morning, I'm like, I don't want to jump at six a.m. TA. I don't want to. I can't jump something with up and down. I'm just like, hey, can we just do arms? I can bang that out really nicely. Yeah. But I do love arms. I do love the whole sequencing. And I do love the brain connection. But I do feel like I'm firing all pistons. Like all pistons are firing. I, I feel very, very good. Yeah. Yeah, that is definitely an amazing part of the method, especially after doing it, you know, for years. And to feel like we're moving in a way we haven't moved before. Yeah. That's... And I don't think any other workouts do that or consider that yeah. as much. 
yeah. like that you're coordinating or that you're isolating one part of your body. Like, I don't think there's another workout that puts that much consideration into that. Like yoga is very, it's all about the spine. Like I, mm. I do resonate with that when she talks about like your spine is yeah. very important. You got to keep that mobile and flexible. It totally makes sense. That's where I came from. That's where my training is from. I understand that. But also like the cross vectors, the minute, you know, muscles that support the bigger ones like that was never totally emphasized in yoga land to me at least um so I like that and yeah. it makes sense it totally I can see it in my body like it and when I do like I still handstand here and there and I can tell that those little finer muscles help support the bigger muscles and my handstands are that much more solid that much more clean they're like I can hold get up so much more solidly than when I wasn't doing that. So interesting. Yeah, that is, that is absolutely what, to me, I mean, sets this method apart, especially because it's building on it all the time. Yes. Just in for years and years to continue like seeing results and yeah. watch those improvements. It's completely amazing. Yeah. And I have a friend who's doing the pregnancy project right now, and I have the DVD just because I. I'm a birth doula and I teach prenatal yoga too. So I'm always, I've watched a bunch of it, but she always, is always saying, I'm like, what month are you at? Like, how's it going with the Tracy and the pregnancy project? She's like, it's great. It's great. It's great. I have to keep remembering. Like she does say, reiterate in the videos, you know, you feel extra and you feel like you're not doing, and you don't see yourself carving out like lean, hot muscle, but it's underneath. And it is like you have fluff over top of the muscle and stuff for a reason. So just trust and it will be there on the other side of your postnatal postpartum journey, which is so cool to see. And I just, I don't know. I just fully believe, believe that. Like if you, even if on it you have a bad day or you're bloaty or you're menstruating or whatever, you think that you're not doing much or you didn't hit that spot. Like, no, you did hit the, you did hit it. You did something and it's there and it will be there give or take two or three days. Like you're fine. So and it's, I don't know. It's all that whole fluctuation thing, but it's cool. Well, and especially like I've heard Tracy say, you know, people will say, oh, I want to get the baby weight off. And that's why I'm coming to, you know, the method. And she's like, I wish you would have come to the method like while you were pregnant because that is helping like with the foundation and of course even prior to pregnancy and stuff but it, it's it's like you see that method she's building the structure you totally know, the time. yeah and it lives deep inside I love it and I love when she says like you can go on vacation if you've done the method for if like a year over a year or so like you can take a week off and this things will still be there. It's not going to slide that much that you're going to totally right. lose things. So I, I do like that. And I think in, yeah, when I was doing my hot yoga, they would say the same thing. Like you kind of live off your residuals for a little bit, you know, it's kind of like insurance. So I'm like, I'm building insurance when I really, really need it. <laughs> it's going to be okay. That, right. Right. And you yeah. do have to like go a little easy on yourself about those kind of things. You can't always, yeah. you know, yeah. work out to the full yeah. extent every day. But yeah, if you have that structure, you're going to keep the strengths and the flexibility and everything yeah. that you build. Yeah. And muscle memory, like it'll always, it'll you'll just go right back to it, you know, a lot quicker than not for sure. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, have you converted anyone to the method? hundred percent. I love all the conversions. I love it. Cause I get to relive Mm -hmm. where I was before and especially like I've converted two of my yogi friends oh. um yeah because I told like the same type eight and there's like diff very similar aspects mm -hmm. with the hot yoga like hot room temperature wise sweaty as you know sweaty as hell, like so hot um and then just kind of like the rigid like not rigid but like the the um, the whole aspect of practicing yeah, routine. In a kind of, yeah, routine in a kind of, not a militant, but kind of a militant way, uh -huh. um, routine and structure of doing it. So, and then like the details, there's a lot of details, just like, you know, our yoga practice. So that really <laughs> has, I think a lot of my yoga friends are like very keen on that. So yeah, I've converted it a good handful few of my friends and it's I love talking to them about it like I said my one friend who's doing pregnancy pregnancy project now 
So I talked to her about that stuff. And then my other friend, she's overseas. She um, was really resistant to it. She's like, well, I don't know if this is for me. And I was like, it is for you. I'm telling you, we, this is what we're doing. You need to get into it or get out. And she was like, mm, I don't know. And it took her like a, probably a year off and on, a year. And then she came back to it again and then still problems. And she's like, I, I think, I know I'm in a moment. I know I'm being resistant. And I know you know what you're talking about, Marge, because you find the good things and you tell me like, I'm like, yeah, you need to get into this because this is what we need to do. So, and then she had, she was having problems with like, I don't know, I guess finding her lane and she's super flexible, weight, so, so, so flexible. So finding that balance between flexibility and building strength. Yeah. Um, was a thing for her and kind of still is. She goes back and forth, but it's fun to talk to your friends about the stuff. Cause I'm like, well, why don't you just tweak it? Like take it down a notch, do an intermediate and then do two beginner and see how you feel like, so. Exactly. Yeah, that's yeah. the most fun part when you can get someone to come into the community. Yeah. And we've had, you know, been in hot yoga land before. So it's all very, I don't know, it's all very similar. <laughs> Yeah, I, I feel like it must be, I don't know, it just probably gives such a better perspective because a lot of the time with the whole heat aspect, people have never done anything like that before. And that part can be really hard to get used to. So it's good to have yeah. that exposure. Yes. Well, I yeah. Yeah, I don't think anyone else understands other than hot yoga people. <laughs> Yeah, it's like the closest maybe, yeah. But it is like when I tell people, I do tell them like, okay, well, it's 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 heated, like it is heated, there's that, and it, it is kind of routined and secret, but it is Pilates based, but with like dance background. And they're like, what does that even mean? I'm like, I, right. I know. <laughs> you just have but to once, do it. <laughs> yeah, but I'm like, turn the music up really loud and then like get, find your zone and then get into it and like, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Loud music is the other factor too. Yeah, helps. Um, can you tell us a little more about where you live and what you do? Uh, I live in Toronto. It's snowing right now, currently oh here. Oh my gosh! I know. Um, it was mild this week too. Super mild like 11 degrees yesterday and now it's not so weird. Uh, so I live in Toronto on the east side of the, or west side of the city. Um, and I've been here all my life. What was the other question and what do I do? Yes. I'm a birth and postpartum doula. And so I help moms transition, you know, through postpartum journey before, during and after pregnancy and labor and stuff. So that's really fun. I've been doing in-person support and lots of virtual support, postpartum coaching online um, by phone, which has been really, really fun. Um, and then, yeah, I mostly kind of do um, home births and birth center. Um, yeah. That's awesome. Very awesome. Cool. Um, thank you for sharing that with us. We yeah. also want to know what is something that you can do today that you could not do before the method? It could be physical or non-physical. Ooh. Um, I don't really know. Uh, well, I wasn't so great at the plank moves. Okay. I really don't like the plank moves, but I do them. Anyways, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> I feel like um, every time I say that, there's a thousand planks in the week. <laughs> I, I'm okay with the moving planks, but like the jack out planks, did she have that last week? I'm like, oh gosh, really hold it, hold in the abs, like t keep it tight, keep it tight. It's like a tricky one still. Yeah. You have to go through all those checklists, mental checklists. Um, yeah, I don't know specifically what I couldn't do. I guess I could co I can coordinate a lot faster and track, mm -hmm. which is pretty cool to see because then I'm yeah. I'm like, oh, my brain is expanding. This is amazing. Yes, I will take this. Yeah. So definitely. that that for sure is one that I'm like, oh, this is helping with brain health. So much. yeah, I really love to see it when I and then I'm like, let's take the supplements to help the brain, and then like I'm gonna do. <laughs> Tam, I'm gonna do extra arms because I'm gonna like track the shit out of this. Like, I just wanna, yeah, totally. Yeah, love yeah. The brain There's and stuff. the type A skills, right? There. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> Extreme extremist behavior. Oh, totally. It's, 
But I mean, you know, what a great thing to be extreme about with well True. and full body fitness. <laughs> True. True. Um, what would you say is most important to you to balance in your life? Um, to balance? Ooh. Like between your own wellness, family, work, the workout, everything. Mm, sanity? <laughs> that sounds like a lot. That sounds like a lot that you just run off <laughs> either way. <laughs> um, what is most important to balance? I guess my own, yeah, my own sanity. And through TAM and well, like well-being, like sleep is a huge one. I talk about this with my friends all the time. Like sleep is so much bigger than you realize. And it seems, it's like the easiest things that are always the hardest. Mm -hmm. Meditation, like sleep it's so easy to go to sleep you close your eyes and you stare at the back of your eyelids but yet i stay up till 1 a.m trying to read the entire internet so it's like okay. just do <laughs> just do the things you don't need to read the whole entire internet it's gonna be there close your eyes go to sleep yeah right right that is <laughs> definitely a very simple but important factor. totally um we have a question in the chat from kylie she would like to know what is your philosophy on exercising while pregnant and has your philosophy evolved since you've been doing TAM? Oh, no, my philosophy hasn't changed. Um, I was trained really well with the hot yoga. Like our training was pretty extensive. It was nine weeks. We did vocal <laughs> training. We did enunciation. We did anatomy. We did quite a bit. And one of the things that they did say is you can't tell a practitioner going into pregnancy if they don't have a foundation, like we said, it's not a good idea to, for them to try something new, especially in a heated room, etc. So if you have a solid practice beforehand, I would say for sure, jump into TAM or any kind of other fitness maybe routine. Sure. But um, was that the question? But definitely without a foundation or knowing I wouldn't jump into to something new or unknown. Yeah, that, that makes good sense. Yeah. I think that's what she's saying is what yeah. it would be. So. Yeah. yeah. And usually it's like six months, like is a good substantial chunk of time to have a good okay. knowing of what's what. Yeah. That makes sense. Um, what would you say that you're the most proud of personally? Um, I'm going to say the nine weeks yoga training because that was, mm -hmm. <laughs> that was a toughie. It was nine weeks in Acapulco. The room was heated to 126 degrees. We did two classes a day. Okay. Each class was two hours. Sometimes he, we got pushed for like another hour. So it was like five hours total in a hot room. People would draw flies. I didn't finish a class until three weeks in. Like I maybe made it to like the, the to 10th po posture. Mm -hmm. I would just die um so that was pretty and it was like one of those like trainings where they kind of break you down and build you back up again which is like what I wanted to experience just to see if I could do it mm -hmm. um so probably that like enduring that kind of a training pretty intensely yeah. um and then like childbirth my kids mm -hmm. two home births super fun and again wanted to see if I could do it like can I can I have can I have a baby at home? Can I do this? Do I don't need medication? I know people do this all the world, all over the world, all the time, but like, can I yeah. <laughs> endure childbirth? But it turns out you can, so right. it's good. <laughs> it's fantastic. Um, yeah. I don't have any children, but my sister has four and she does it without medication. And I think- Oh my gosh, four is a lot. The coolest thing on earth, but you know. So fun. Um, so we want to play two truths and a lie with you. Yeah. You can give us three statements about yourself and we'll guess which one is not true. Okay. Um, I've been doing yoga for 14 years. Okay. I just got my fifth tattoo. Okay. And my husband's arm got touched by an orangutan. Hmm. Okay, so yoga for 14 years, five tattoos, and your husband getting touched by an orangutan. That all seems possible to me. Um, we'll see if anybody will guess in the chat. Hmm. I don't know. 
I don't know. I should have, I knew I should have asked you what year you went to your yoga. Oh. <laughs> I had that question in my mind and I didn't ask you. Um, okay. So Goldie says tattoos are false. Oh, the tattoo statement is false. You have more than five. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Um, let's see. Crunchy agrees with that. So hmm, that's funny that we think the fifth tattoo is a lie because we think you have more than five. Um, gosh, I don't know. 14 years for yoga. I mean, that seems very, very possible. The orangutan, we should have talked about more travel. We should have talked about more travel. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, wow. We have another. Maria thinks that it's also false about the five tattoos because she thinks you have more than five tattoos. Oh, uh, You know, I think I'm going to say that the 14 years of yoga is a lie because it could be like 15 or 13 or something. I feel like the others are true. Yeah. Yeah. It's the fifth tattoo. I do have more. Oh! <laughs> my husband in part, my, my husband counted them out and I have 17. Oh my goodness. Wow. I know, right? I Who would have six. thought? thought 14 six. years of yoga, that was a long time. It is. And my husband did get touched by a orangutan when we were on a jungle trek in Indonesia. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, so what year was it that you did the yoga training? 2008. Eight, and then I practiced for about a year and a half before that, so 2006 or seven ish. Okay, yeah, that is so funny that I was gonna ask you that. <laughs> <laughs> so Excellent. fun, that was super fun. That's fun That's good to learn those things about you. Who would have thought 17 tattoos? Now I'm gonna start asking that and ask Camille, how many tattoos do you have? Yeah, totally. I think there's a lot of tattoos in the family. Um, so let's take it back to another couple of questions about Tam. Um, yeah. Is there a particular Tam move that you hated, but you now love? Uh, so we know you don't love the planks, but yeah. you love. I don't, I didn't like the planks and I don't love them now, <laughs> but I will do, I will do them. Um, I don't know. Pro probably with your yoga practice, I would think there's not that many that maybe stand out like they do. Yeah. For, like yeah, the bridge no. or things like that. But I hate, I just don't, I kind of don't really enjoy the getting up and getting down. Like if it's a, like a strictly mat class, I'm, I'm like, good. Yes. But the getting up and getting down, like into this week's advance, there's that one move where you bow, you standing splits basically is what it is. Mm -hmm. There's that. And then you balance forward too. that. I'm kind of like, Ugh, do I have to get up? Like I'd rather just like, <laughs> we just stay on the mat. <laughs> yeah. I'm happy to do whatever you want me to do on the mat, right? Yeah, like, I really don't want to stand up now. Like, I just... <laughs> it does take it to another level of yeah. <laughs> endurance. Like, moving your entire body to standing yeah. up all the way back down, yes. And I saw some people doing the standing sequence, or the ch the electives, uh, the chair. And okay. I'm like, yeah. and then I was like, do I want to go back to the chair just for fun? I'm like, mm, no, I'm going to wait that, wait that. I'll go back to that, like, figure that out later on. The chair is fun, but it's like definitely next level, but I don't crave the chair or anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh. There's definitely a love-hate relationship with the chair. Yeah. Good to mix in and mix it up, but not, yeah. not for lovesies. <laughs> um, so we have another question from Crunchy, who is actually Keisha. So I'm yes. Keisha. Um, what is your favorite Tam move? Oh, splits, do I? And headstands. <laughs> I will take a split and a headstand. Like the past, I don't know, what has it been, four weeks? There's been rolling splits. I'm like, yes. And then at the end, she does like a straddle just to stretch. I'm like, can we do middle splits? Is she going to take it to middle splits? I am in 2022. Let's do this. Uh, if there was that, I would totally, I would totally, yeah, be into that. You might be the first Ask Tamley interview that that's your favorite move. <laughs> Really? <laughs> yeah. 
Well, I just feel like I do resonate with her when she says, like, I'm two or three days away from full splits, like dropping down and holding, like, and that's kind of where I'm pra my practice is as well. Like, I feel like I'm on that kind of a level where I can, like, just give me two or three days or whatever, and I, I'll be all the way down. It's that balance between flexibility and maintaining your strength as well, so... It's like not a necessary thing to do, but it's fun and I can do it if you give me three days and I can just do it for 10 minutes a day. I'm good. <laughs> yeah, that is, um, it's interesting how she's pointed out. I guess I didn't think about it that way before about the balance between flexibility and strength and not being too flexible or not going to the furthest end of how flexible you are and having the strength to keep at a certain level. Yes, yes. Um, so is there anything else that you would like to share with the Tamley about your Tam journey? Oh, um, not really. 2021, been Tamming every day, haven't rested, so okay. don't know if I will in January. And I might just work on the middle splits. I don't know. What else is, does anybody have any? I also kind of make, uh, new fun goals. Like, okay, okay last year it was trying to do more dance cardio but that kind of just didn't work out maybe it's another year so I let I quickly let that go <laughs> but I mean tamming every day just to see what would happen is a new thing but if you have any tam oh. resolutions um send them to me because I want to know <laughs> every day you're going to get me to do that in 2022 because I in 2017 I did every day except for seven days but I've never done 365 days I feel like there was a hashtag. Wasn't there a group doing it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there yeah. totally was. I'm not sure. I can't remember who was all in it, but it was like the TAM 365 or something. Oh, I feel like once you get in a groove, you're good. Like before the summer, I had a little blip and then I was doing like birth work at like more intensely at the beginning of or like March and I was doing overnights, like overnight support. So my practice would be it, midday or later in the day and that threw me off because I was like oh this is so weird I just have to get through this I just have to get through this moment in time and then now I'm back to like over the summer and then now I'm back into mornings which is my preferred time um but yeah now it's kind of just and I thought I've heard her say this like it just becomes like brushing your teeth it's just yep. becomes weird if you don't do it and it is like Anything past 9.30, if I haven't practiced yet, it's like, this is weird. This is way too late. I got to, this. I'm not doing this tomorrow. Mental note, like, this is a good check-in. Um, so yeah. I feel, I felt, I feel like I thought that I would, I was just like, just trust that, you know, you will crave this. And then sure enough, you, you do, like you do. You want to check in with the music and move your body and it feels good and, the compounding interest just keeps going. So then you just, I don't know. I've been, I've been finding it pretty easy to do all year. So I don't know what I'll do next year or if I'll keep going or I'll take a break. And then I'm like, and then when I do feel like taking a break, I'm like, but I'm going to take a break for this day. Like what's so significant about this right. day? Like, <laughs> and then I'm like, Oh right. no, I can never stop. But I mean, there's been days where I've done just 30 minutes and that's it. Uh -huh. like, yeah. Yeah. Still a tan session, so, but yeah. Um, we have another question in the chat from Kylie. She wants to know if you have any tips on doing the splits or on doing headstands. Heck yes. Um, my daughter's working on splits too because she takes gymnastics and I tell her just five breaths a day each side. So like front five, hold for five, back, hold for a five. Mm -hmm. And then if you need to brace yourself, like get blocks or get wherever you are mm -hmm. blocks. And then you can always, if you are not into like going down to full splits, do half splits, mm -hmm. like just take a forward lunge and then like one leg out and do like the hamstring stretch or calf stretch, mm -hmm. but literally five breaths a day, each side, super easy. You can do five breaths. Five breaths is like 15 seconds. Um, and then what was the other part of the question? Um, any tips on headstands? Oh, headstand. A lot of people have problems being inverted. Like either you, either you feel like you don't have the strength or you feel like you can't, like the upside down part is the, pro, is the issue. Mm -hmm. Like going upside down inverted. And I would say practice up against a wall 
Need, get a pillow if you need to. And then just do teddy bear for like as long as you need to. Teddy bear headstand, like knees on elbows. Um, but if you're practicing Tracy Anderson, she wouldn't drop a headstand in if you're not fully capable. Like we are all capable if you've been practicing the method for like, you know, three to six months minimum. She wouldn't drop a headstand in if you're if you we weren't capable of it. So she's fully prepared us and just know that your body can do it. And they're they're so great. Like you feel very invigorated after blood blood rushing to, you know, the opposite end of your body is so great. Um but yeah, it's a lot of core. It's a lot of core strength. It's a lot of stretching up out of your shoulders and pushing and using the floor. And then make sure a lot of people do like their hands are way out here. Bring like tuck your elbows in and then push in with your core and then lift up. I don't know. That's the best I can. I have a post on it. You can find it in my feed. Um, but yeah, they're so fun and they're really addicting once you get <laughs> once you get into them. <laughs> Well, I think that's such a good point that I'm doing like the teddy bear. Um, yeah, so you're still getting you're still getting okay. benefit and like, yeah, the downward dogs that she gives us too. That's still an inversion. Like you're still getting benefits there. You're still inverting. You're still getting blood flowing the the other way. You're still strengthening your arms, your shoulders. Mm -hmm. It's still a good press. Yeah. Yeah, I remember. I think when I don't know one of the first headstands that Tracy like stopped the class and said mentally you think you can't do it but physically you absolutely can it's just yeah. changing the thing in your mind of understanding you can be upside down yeah it's so it's very interesting i don't know i've unfortunately i've never had had to experience that. like i did gymnastics when i was younger um so i've never had that upside down problem issue challenge um and i've always been doing cartwheels and stuff mm -hmm. so it's kind of it's just fun for me circus play but even hanging backwards off your couch can be a good first start like you kind of get the sensation of being upside down and then going up against your couch the other way and doing teddy bear and holding that for as long as you need to for like you know a few weeks you know yeah. five breaths a day that's it and then just playing around with getting getting more upright excellent you're inspiring me <laughs> Do it. I'm going to work out every day of 2022 and I'm going to learn to do a headstand. I can do the teddy bear thing, but I've yeah. never gotten my legs out before. You're halfway there then. <laughs> One leg at a time and then like up against a wall. Safety net. For sure. Absolutely. And I love the thinking about five breaths a day too. That's a great way for you to bring in the yoga practice to yeah. exploring your strength and flexibility. Totally. That's how I learned to handstand. Like I learned to handstand off Instagram. Like I, I just took the tips from Instagram and did it literally 10 seconds a day here and there, wherever I could, like living room, dining room, bathroom, kids room, whatever. <laughs> I'm getting like, I'm just going to kick up and see if I can hold it. I'm not holding it. Okay. Try again, making some adjustments, but yeah, different from a headstand, but handstands right. are also fun too. Right. <laughs> right. Well, I, I don't know about getting to a handstand, but We'll see, especially since the headstands show up in the workouts regularly. Yeah, she really does. Well, it's been super awesome talking to you today, Marge. Um, is there anything else you would want to say to the family before um, we wish everyone a happy weekend? Um, happy holidays. Thanks uh, for showing up and inspiring me and keeping me motivated all the time. I hope... Um, I do the same for you and finish up the year super strong guys. Don't take too many days off. <laughs> Just keep the routine no. going. Just keep going. That's the message from today's Ask totally. Don't You can do it. Impressed. So well, thank fun. Thank you so much, Marge. This um, interview is going to go onto the Ask Hamley page right now and then it'll also be on YouTube in a few days. Cool. Thanks so much, Suzanne. You thank guys are you great. Know. So are you. Happy holidays, family. <laughs>